most of us are familiar with the foggy and desolate streets of a place called Silent Hill, whether it's been through video games or movies. There's something psychologically terrifying about a monster-infested hellscape with a fire burning deep beneath its grounds. But as many of you may not know, Silent Hill, or at least the inspiration behind the concept, was based on a real-life place. Today we're going to learn about the history of Centralia, Pennsylvania, otherwise known as Silent Hill, here on Mystery Archives. The town that would become known as Centralia was founded and incorporated into the local borough in 1866. The main employer within the community was the various coal mining companies that operated within the area. And although a job like coal mining carried various risk, it provided a decent life for the majority of the 2,000 citizens that occupied the town. But although being a much needed financial lifeline at the time, it would soon also be its downfall. The coal mining continued until the 1960s when most of the companies went out of business. And by this time, the borough had grown to home a total of five schools, seven churches, five hotels, 27 saloons, two theaters, a bank, post office, and 14 general stores. On May 27, 1962, the people of Centralia put into motion a course of events that would change their history and lives forever. It was a Monday, and the citizens were getting ready for their Memorial Day festivities to take place just a few days later. But there was a problem that hadn't been dealt with yet. Due to their continued population growth, the main landfill had been overflowing for quite some time. The city council had met earlier that month to discuss the best way to go about cleaning up the 300 foot wide and 75 foot tall pit of trash that had accumulated. So it was agreed upon that they would burn the pile and have the problem out of the way before the festivities could commence. The only problem was that the landfill was located directly on top of the old coal mine. But deciding that it was a risk they had to take, they set fire to the trash on May 27, 1962 and waited for the smoldering trash to burn itself out. The only problem was that it didn't stop. The fire soon grew out of control despite the best efforts of the local fire department, and it latched onto the old coal seam from the mine and slowly but surely spread throughout the mines under the city. Despite the initial panic and realization of the magnitude of a situation they were dealing with, I could only imagine how those in charge must have felt. Some of the first residents to notice that things were heating up, so to speak, were the town's gas station owners. Upon taking the temperature of their underground fuel tanks, something they routinely did, they panicked when the temperature gauges read 397 degrees Fahrenheit. To put it in perspective, gasoline typically combusts around 495 degrees, so it was only a short time before the ticking time bombs exploded around the city. Some residents began evacuating on their own volition, and soon flames were visible, coming out of cracks in the ground and more flames began to be spotted over the days to come. And when those flames were extinguished, the residents began reporting the constant smell of smoldering trash and coal. Over the next several weeks, the authorities tried almost every conceivable effort to smother the blaze. They pumped water into the mines daily. They covered the surface with clay and pumped a slurry of ash water and rocks into the mine, but all efforts failed to stop the hell that was now burning deep beneath their beloved town.
eventually, they had no choice other than to give up, and fearing for the safety of the town's inhabitants, the city was condemned and all residents were forced to vacate their homes. The majority of citizens evacuated the town, but several opted to stay despite the warnings of local authorities. The ones who did leave relocated to surrounding towns, and that was until the fire continued to spread. In the beginning of 1980, the adverse health effects of carbon monoxide poisoning were being reported within the surrounding townships of the borough at an alarming rate. The statewide attention to the scale of the problem culminated in 1981, when a 12-year-old resident named Todd Dombowski fell into a sinkhole, which had spontaneously opened up beneath him as he was playing in his backyard. He held on by a tree root while breathing in carbon monoxide until his 14-year-old cousin pulled him out of the hole, saving his life. Upon examination, it was found that the hole was 4 feet across and 150 feet deep and was spewing out toxic gases and intense heat. Soon after, more of the surrounding towns were forced to evacuate, and in 1992, then-Governor Bob Casey invoked eminent domain on all properties in the borough, condemning all buildings within. A subsequent legal effort by the few remaining residents failed to have the decisions reversed, and in 2002, the U.S. Postal Service revoked Centralia's zip code 17927. And despite $42 million worth of relocation payments and buyouts, the last remaining residents were again ordered to leave, but refused. They eventually reached an agreement with local and federal officials to allow them to live out the rest of their lives in their homes. And afterwards, their homes would be seized under eminent domain to ensure that no one else could live in the condemned areas. Centralia has since become a ghost town and a bit of a tourist attraction. Visitors come to see the smoke on its abandoned streets and to observe what seems like a scene frozen in time. And it's because of this creepy spectacle that many have reported seeing ghostly apparitions and strange creatures within the toxic fog. People who have visited Centralia over the years are more than often awestruck by what they see, a gridwork of empty nameless streets, remnants of properties such as steps to a front door that's no longer there, all surrounded by smoldering hillsides and a devastated wasteland. There are three cemeteries that occupy the grounds of the church that was torn down years ago. And while no lives were lost during the tragedy, visitors have often reported seeing ghostly figures and hearing odd sounds and feelings as if they were being watched. And others have even speculated that the town is now an entrance to hell itself. These are two stories that I could find of people experiencing such ghostly happenings. I visited Centralia last weekend with a couple of my friends and I thought I might share a very weird experience I had while exploring the town. We were there for about an hour and a half, and we were checking out the interesting locations that I had heard about, like the burning hillside, the crack in Route 61, and the streets without homes. We were in the area next to an old cemetery on the east side of town, east of Route 61. We had just checked out some old tombstones and we're getting a whiff of smoke from the east so that we walked down the old gravel road to look around. We found a slag-covered hillside with steam coming out of it, and when we heard what sounded like a voice saying something inaudible from down below where we were, all three of us heard it. We figured it was someone else checking out the area too, so we ignored it. Then we heard it again a little more clearly, a few words and it sounded like leave this place. At that moment, the hill we were standing on started steaming more and it really began to stink. 
like rotten eggs or sulfur, I guess. Well, it sort of spooked us, so we figured we'd better head back to the car. And as we were walking back to the area towards the cemetery, we heard it again. Not the same words and not as clear, but it was like, why, why did you come here? What was even weirder was that it sounded like someone was yelling it out of the bushes. It was quiet and kind of closer, but we couldn't figure out exactly which direction it was coming from. It was very weird. We got back to the car and didn't see any other cars or people the whole time we were there. We left and weren't really sure what to make of it. We really weren't sure if we wanted to talk about it either. But all I know is that I'm not going back. And when I got home, I found out that the area I was walking in was near the location where the fire started, just right across the road from the cemetery. And something is just not right about that place. My name is Jim, and about a month ago, my girlfriend Lori and I were coming back from Nobles, and we decided to take 61 home and stop at Centralia to take a look, as we did once before. First, let me say, we're not superstitious. In fact, we're quite the opposite. We like checking out abandoned places and old buildings, old cemeteries, and that sort of thing. We've seen a lot of old abandoned homes over the years, and we checked out Centralia about a month ago, and it really gave us a fright. It was a wide abandoned twin home up on the side of the street, on a hill. There were two units, and both had red numbers sprayed on the front, which indicated from what I gathered from the other homes that it was probably set to be demolished in the near future. So we decided to check it out. The back door was open, so we went in. Some of the first floor windows were boarded up, making it dark, but we explored the old house a little. We were on the second floor in the hallway near the stairs that led up and down to the first and third floors. The door was open leading to the third floor. Lori was in the hallway while I was at the top of the steps that led downstairs. At this point, we heard footsteps coming from the stairs from the third floor. It sounded to me that the steps were coming from the ceiling above, but also going down as well. So my first thought was that perhaps someone was living in the attic maybe a third floor bedroom or something. At first we were startled and really were worried that someone else was in the house. And as the footsteps sounded like they were going to reach the second floor hallway, Lori looked into the stairwell expecting to see someone and there wasn't anyone there. At the same time, we looked down the steps to the first floor and saw nobody. We just stared at each other for a few seconds, and I promptly asked, do you want to leave? And she said yes. We made a beeline to the back door where we came in and out to the car. We drove about a hundred feet or so, and stopped to look back at the house looking at the windows. I mean, we expected to see someone looking at us, but there was nothing though. It was really weird. Like someone had walked down those stairs, but we couldn't see them, and it freaked us out. Anyways, I just don't know what to make of the whole situation. The coal mine fire of Centralia was indeed a tragedy, and it's my speculation that although no one was lost during the situation, Perhaps the collective trauma was enough to stir up whatever could have been lurking there, or attracted something that wasn't there before. Losing your home and essentially your history due to an accident, and really for any reason at all, must have been devastating, and if there happens to be anybody listening with close ties to everything, my heart really does go out to you. As for now, the legend of Centralia continues to live on as a desolate place where there is no people and no happiness. A smoldering wasteland. A true 
silent too. 